At the site, the lumber is allowed to further acclimatize until it reaches kind of an equilibrium moisture content, closer to the moisture content of the environment in which the uh, wood is going to be built. So for outdoor wood, that's approximately 12 percent, and of course drier for some climates. For interior wood, that's about 8 percent, about 8 percent for moisture content. Now that's going to vary. In the uh, Gulf Coast region, in the, in the southeast, it's going to be more like 11 percent because the air is moister there, it's got more moisture. In the Intermountain West, where it's drier, and in the southwest, where it's drier, in the desert, it's going to be closer to something like 6 percent. So for a wood floor, for instance, the builder's going to go ahead and bring the wood that's been delivered to the site and leave it inside the room so it can acclimatize to the moisture content of the room. It wants to reach an equilibrium moisture because if we fasten the floor, if we fasten the wood members down to the subfloor and then later it dried or later it got, it got more moist, it would expand or contract or warp, but it's dry. It's nailed down by that point, so you start to have real problems. So we're going to leave it inside for, for, in the case of flooring, we're going to leave it inside for 48 hours, and then we'll start. If you put it in right away, that's, that's a, not, a, not a stable way to, to install a smooth floor. And then green lumber is lumber that's not been dried out at all. It's just been cut. And so anytime you're dealing with green lumber, uh, there's a lot of caution that you need to take because the wood is going to change radically between when you fasten it and uh, over the next several months. In which dimension will wood shrink most? Radially, tangentially, or longitudinally? Go ahead and hit pause. So again, this is kind of one of those quirky qualities of wood that was brought about by the quirky geometry of wood and the kind of linearity of the cellular structure, the bundle of straws nature of wood. So as the water leaves the cells, the cells are going to shrink, the straws are going to shrink. And in the longitudinal dimension, this dimension, the shrinkage is going to be pretty minimal. It's going to be pretty minimal because there just aren't that many cells in that dimension. Uh, the cells are very long. In the radial dimension, which is this dimension here, if you can go back to our image of a bunch of straws in your hand, as each of those straws shrink, it will shrink significantly in the radial dimension because it will, it will change the diameter of the log. It'll start to shrink down. And even 50% more shrinkage will happen tangentially. So uh, in the tangential direction, again, if you can picture all those straws shrinking, and, and so each one is now a thinner straw, say each one went from a normal straw to a, a cocktail straw or something like that, you can imagine how towards the outside of the log you would have significant shrinkage because there's just a lot of straws on the, on the perimeter. And so when they shrink, you get these cracks, and these cracks are called checks. They look something like this inside the log and they're one of the features of irregularities and defects of wood and wood construction. So we're going to have a log here and we're going to cut four identical pieces of lumber. Which of the four will distort the most as it seasons? Which of the four will distort the most? And which one will distort the least while we're at it? Go ahead and hit pause. All right, let's watch what happens when all four of them warp. I'm going to show this four times so you can look at it and kind of take your time with it. So let's go through this four times. Let's watch what the new shape becomes. So we're going to go old shape to new shape. Go. So when we're talking about boards that are cut from something kind of more parallel to the grain instead of perpendicular to it, uh, we start to get more warping. That's one of the reasons, again, why quarter sawn wood is not only stronger and more beautiful, it actually warps less. So if we're, using, if we're doing trim work or furniture or hardwood flooring, we don't want it to distort. So we don't want logs from the circumference. Uh, we would much rather have something coming perpendicular to the center if possible, so from the outside towards the inside, or something from the inside period. New question. Which of the following represents a bow in the wood? Go ahead and hit pause. 
So a bow is this one. These are all some of the many different ways that a, that a piece of lumber uh, can, can have a defect. So crooking, bowing, twisting, and cupping all come from differential shrinkage, the fact that the uh, wood was cut in a way uh, where a portion of it is going to shrink at a different rate than another portion based on where it is in the, uh, in the log. So in the case of a crook, we can actually use it to our advantage. If we're using it as a joist or a rafter, we can install it with the crown facing up, almost as a camber, so that it, once it gets loaded, it's flat, and it'll actually may possibly increase its strength. Anyhow, there are other ways we can have defects. We can have decay or insect damage. This particular uh, decay is from a fungus. We can have something called a wane. So wanes are like irregular, not square edges that come from sawing too close to the perimeter of the log. So in this case, we sawed right next to the perimeter of the log, and we got a good piece in the middle, but kind of at the edges, it wasn't so clean. And a knot, of course, is where a branch, I think most people know this, but a knot is where a branch once connected to the tree. If the knot rots and falls out, then we have a knot. Finally, checks, and we talked about checks before. This is what uh, the cracks in the perimeter of a log look like from the differential shrinkage because we have so much more shrinking around the perimeter than we have at the core. And so if we look at the end grain of wood, we can see the, if you kind of look closely, squint your eyes and get right next to your computer screen, you can see the end grain, um, you can see the, the bundle of straws, you can see the uh, parallel orientation, you can see the kind of uh, linear nature of the cellular structure of wood. And we don't want to ever expose the end grain outdoors because we're exposing the straws, we're exposing it to moisture. And that's true of dimension lumber and that's true of plywood. We want to cover it. So it could be a metal end cap or it could be another piece of wood, but we don't ever want to see it exposed because it's going to split and it's going to rot and it's going to warp and it's going to have water damage.